Hi and welcome back to your part 3 of your um, sequence and series lecture. This will be the last part. I'll be going a little slow, uh, just a little bit more. And it will be covering binomial series, convergence of sequence and series. Well, actually more on binomial series. Uh, we, we're not really touching on convergence of sequence and series. So right on. Uh, uh, hopefully by now you've answered uh, you've watched all the two videos, the two previous videos, and answered two quizzes. So it is all based on sequence and series. So at this part of the lecture, you are going to learn to define n factorial. This tanda seru right here, this factorial sign. Um, yeah, tanda seru, it's pronounced as factorial. n factorial. And um, you are going to be using n choose r notations. And you're going to learn how to expand uh, a plus b to the, the whole thing to the power of n, uh, where, where n is a positive integer, whether it is more than or equals to, uh, more than or equals to 1, or less than or equals to 1. We're, we're look at that. We're going to be looking at that later on. Okay, so straight on to the factorial sign first and foremost. Okay, so what does a factorial sign mean? Let's say you have a number n. n can be any number. Uh, and n factorial would mean that uh, it is the multiplication of uh, n multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by n minus 2, multiplied by n minus 3, all the way down to the multiplication of 1. And you stop there. Let's see, for example, if you were to have 5 factorials, uh, 5 factorial would mean that it is a multiplication of 5 with 4, 3, 2, and 1. So you, you can press your calculator 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So if it is 9 factorial, then it would be 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 all the way down to 1. If you have familiarized yourself with your calculator, ex, uh, especially those with the FX570MS, the, the gray one, um, the factorial sign is... Um, right below the mode uh, the mode button um, yeah the it's right below the mode button so let's say for another example you have uh, you're looking for factorial 7 then it would be 7 times 6 times 7 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. or you can just press your calculator uh, 7 and then shift and then uh, the button with the x power negative 1 which will give you the factorial and then you just press the equal sign and it gives the same value okay so moving on that's factorial and where are we going to be using this factorial is in the binomial coefficient so a binomial coefficient is also known as uh, is usually written as n r uh, in these big brackets. So let n and r be whole numbers with n to be always more than or equals to r. And n choose r, okay, this is pronounced as n choose r. You can also write it in n c r. This, this uh, application right here is also available on your calculator um, for shift division symbol shift division symbol it will give you that letter c so n choose r and n must always be bigger than r or equals to okay and this here is actually equals to n factorial divided by n minus r the whole thing factorial r factorial so this uh, formula right here is pretty important i'm not sure if it is provided in your exam please do check in your lab manual okay so when are we going to be using this uh, binomial coefficient let's have a look okay so let's say your question says uh, that your n is equals to 5 and your r is equals to 2 so this right here is pronounced as 5 choose 2 or in other words 5 c2 so you can put it into your binomial coefficient 
uh, formula, 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 2 factorial, which is 3 factorial, multiplied by 2 factorial. And you should get your answer then. You can always check that out uh, if what you are doing is correct or not using your calculator. Again, shift division sign. Uh, 9 choose 3, so 9 choose C3, 9 factorial divided by 9 minus 3, the whole thing factorial. So that means it's 6 factorial multiplied by 3 factorial. And you should get your answer. So why is this important? Um, for example, let's say for example, you're supposed to uh, expand uh, two unknowns, uh, A and B. Uh, you're going to expand a plus b, the whole thing, square. So this is pretty simple, although in last exam, so many of you got this wrong. I don't know why. But when I ask you if you know how to expand a plus b, the whole thing square, everybody's like, yeah, we've learned that in SPM. But no, you still get it wrong during your exam. But never mind. Um, pass is pass. Right now, is a plus b, the whole thing square. Of course, you bila kembangkan, it would be a square plus 2ab plus b squared and then if it is 3 if it is to the power of 3 then you just add another a plus b here and then the a squared multiplied by a plus b um, let's say oh sorry um, okay so let's say for example uh, let me just now, let's say, for example, you want to expand a plus b to the power of 3. So, you should add your a plus b this side. Let's say, just for example. So, a squared will be multiplied by a. You get your a cubed. a squared will be multiplied by b. You get a squared b. Your 2ab will be multiplied by a first, get, giving you 2a squared b. Uh, and then 2ab will then be multiplied by b, and then b squared with a, and b squared with b. That is how you get your, whoop, yeah, so um, that is how you get your a plus b cube. Okay, so moving on. Uh, why is this important? Well, what if it's not just a plus b squared or it's not just a plus b cubed? What if it is a lot bigger like a plus b to the power of n? Uh, so what happens then? This is where you need your binomial expansion. Okay, so binomial expansion is equals to uh, n choose 0, a power n, b power 0, plus n choose 1, a power n minus 1, b power 1, so on and so forth, until uh, n choose n, a power 0, b power n. So this is why it's important. So this right here, you need to memorize, unfortunately. Okay, so... Um, so for every positive integer n, uh, mind you that the n has to be a positive integer, this is how you are going to expand this. Okay, let's say for example now, 2 plus x to the power of 5. So that means your n is equals to 5. So if you were to expand this using binomial expansion, then it would be uh, 5 choose 0 to the power of 5, x power 0, x power 0 is equals to 1. Uh, plus 5 choose 1 to the power 4, x power 1, so on and so forth, until 5 choose 5, 2 to the power of 0, which is equals to 1, x power 5. So then you get your expansion. This is called binomial expansion. Uh, what if now it is 1 minus 2x power 4? So this minus 2x here just uh, tells you that the whole b is not just b. It is minus 2x. So the whole it affects inside the binomial uh, formula as well. The minus has to be included. So be very careful of that. This is often a, a common mistake uh, of others that they forget the fact that there is a minus sign here. See, if you were to compare it to uh, this one here, it's 2 plus x. So that's why there are no plus here because it is similar to the 
uh, initial formula but now what if b now is no longer plus what if it is minus so this shows it it is being shown in this example so uh, it is to the power of 4 so that means n is, is equals to 4 so 4 choose 0 4 choose 1 4 choose 2 4 choose 3 up until 4 choose 4 and this is how you're going to expand your um, binomial okay so now second part if you were to notice previously all of the expansion is for n to the power of 4 to the power of 5 anything that is more than 1 but what if now that your binomial expansion is less than 1 Okay, so we're going to uh, look at uh, the general term in a binomial expansion and determine a particular coefficient in a binomial expansion and determine the term independent of a binomial expansion. That means uh, instead of just expanding it, I mean you can do that as well, we're going to just directly look at only one term. Okay, so the term r plus 1 of the binomial expansion of a expansion of a plus b power n is n choose r a to the power of n minus r b to the power of r for example uh, for example you have the expansion of a plus b to the power of 8 and we're going to look for the third term so r right now uh, the uh, yeah, we're going to be looking for the third term so r plus 1 now is equals to 3 so r is equals to 2 so 8 choose 2 a to the power of 8 minus 2 which is 6 b to the power of uh, 2 so you get your coefficient of your uh, third term remember r plus 1 is equals to the number of terms so if it's the third term then r plus 1 is equals to 3 if it's the sixth term then r plus 1 is equals to 6 so that means r is equals to 5 so this is how you are looking for the term or also known as the coefficient what the co oh yeah so what does coefficient mean okay now let's look at this example all right so uh Yeah, sorry about that. Um, okay, so what does coefficient mean, right? So let's say, look at this example. It says find the coefficient of y power 5 and x power 6 in the expansion of x plus y to the power of 9. Okay, so if we were to look for the r plus 1 term following the previous slide's um, way, uh, then it would have been n choose r x to the power of 9 minus r y to the power of r but right now we're looking for y to the power of 5 that means right here r now is equals to 5 so just exchange r into 5 okay exchanging r into 5 you get your uh, coefficient of uh, y power 5 that means uh, that also means that um uh, let me just show you. That also means that what you have just calculated is that the term, when a, this is the term that you would have gotten if you were to expand it. Okay. So since we are only looking for the coefficient, then it would be just this part. Okay. So next question. It says for the term x power 6. Okay, so right now we're looking at this part right here. So x power 6, that means 9 minus r is equals to 6. And for 9, to mi 9 minus r to equal to 6, r has to be equal to 3. So we then just exchange it back into this formula right here. Okay, so 9 choose 3, y power 3. That would be your coefficient of x power 6. Okay, next example. So, we're going to determine the terms independent of x. What does it mean to be independent of x? Let's say you expand a plus b, the whole thing square, right? You're going to get a, oh wait, that's wrong. Uh, a plus x, lah, let's say x, okay? Uh, so, a squared plus 2a x plus 
x squared. This is what you're going to get if you were to expand a plus x squared. So the term that is independent of x is a squared because it does not have any x's in it. Okay, so that is what it means by the term that is independent of x. Okay, so it's going to rub that off first. All right, so let's look at the first example now. Okay, uh, we're looking for um whoops oh boy just give me one minute <laughs> okay so now we're looking for the term independent of x for the following binomial let's look at the first example okay so x plus one over x the whole thing power x and the r plus one term is always start by doing that always start by writing down your information and your information is that if it was if it was the r plus one term it would have been na eight choose r x to the power eight of eight minus r which is this first term right here uh, one over x to the power of r which is the second term right here okay so write this down first and what are we looking for term that is independent of x so that means x now has to power zero because x power zero is equals to one so your x disappears okay um, so that means eight minus r must equal to zero oh before that, you can actually buka kurungan this this buka this kurungan and simplify things out. So for x to the power of zero, for x to power zero, now eight minus two r should equal to zero. So then you can solve for the value of r. R has to equal to four. Okay, so since now we know that when r is equals to four, x is going to be powered zero. Okay, we can definitely look for the term independent of x, which is just 70. Okay, let's look at the next example. x squared minus 3 over x squared. Okay, x squared minus 3 over x squared. So your this is your a. Your a is x squared. Your b is minus 3 over x squared. So then choose r, x squared power 10 minus r, this is supposed to be r, I'm sorry about that, uh, minus, minus 3 over x squared, the whole thing power r. So we can actually simplify this out. Let's simplify that out first. So buka kurungan, the 3 goes down, it powers r, the x goes up, it powers negative 2 r, and then all the x's is being brought together right here. Okay, and further simplified. So now the term that is independent of x, that means again x power 0. So that means 20 minus 4r is equals to 0 right here. So you can solve for r and r is equals to 5. Straight away put it back into your uh, formula. 10 choose 5. Since x is power 0, you don't have to write that down. Uh, minus 3 power 5 and you get your coefficient. Okay, so like I said just now, uh, once you learn how to expand it, notice how n is always bigger than 1. n is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But what if now n is equals to something that is negative or a fraction less than 1? Okay, so how are you going to expand that kind of binomial expansion? Okay, so let's look at um, that example. So for the binomial expansion of 1 plus x to the power of n, where n is not a negative integer or a fraction we use the following expansion okay so now it's no longer n choose r um and choose r a to the power of n minus r b to the power of r it is now equal to a different formula uh, don't worry i think this formula is provided during the exam so one plus n times x plus n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial x square. So notice how it's x power 0, x power 1, x power 2. The next term would be x power 3. And then if there was another term right here, it would be x power 4. And the n is decreasing in the numerator, n and minus 1. So it's just n. Then it's n times n minus 1. Then it's n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. So the next term would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3. Uh, even here, it would be over 1 factorial, but 
you don't write one factorial because it's just one. Uh, next term is two factorial. The next term, the next term is three factorial. The next term would be four factorial. So you see the the rhythm there. You know, it it expands, it expands, followingly. Okay, so this expansion is only valid for when x is less than or equals to one. In um. Or in other words, x is more than negative 1, less than 1. Okay, so let's see the first example. Okay, uh, the first example is 1 plus x. This is your a, this is your, uh, this is 1 plus x. This is your n, and your n is negative 2. Okay, so 1 plus nx, so n now is negative 2, plus n, n minus 1, so it's negative 2 minus 1 over 2 x power do and so on and so forth this is how you're going to expand it okay so you're just we will usually uh, the standard of your level would be the first four terms of this binomial expansion uh, it usually goes on forever it's an infinite series okay so we will usually ask for the first four terms only only for the first four terms. Okay, so once you've answered the first four terms, or if the question doesn't say that how many terms are you required to write down, then the first four terms would be just right. Okay, so once you've expanded that, you can further simplify. Always try to simplify. Okay, so it is valid for x less than or negative, uh, less than 1 modulus of x. Now, let's say for the next example now, uh, instead of 1 plus x to the power of negative 2, it's 1 plus x to the power of a fraction, which is 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is a type of fraction, right? So, it's 1 plus nx, n is now 1 over 2, plus n, n minus 1, x squared over 2 factorial, n, n minus 1, n minus 2, x cubed over 3 factorial, and so on and so forth. Okay, following the binomial expansion. So just expand that out and simplify at most that you can. Okay, now what if um, your x is now minus? Okay, so it follows as well that um, uh, that uh, it that your x needs to be changed as well within the uh, formula. But also, notice how your formula that was given was uh, the initial formula. The initial formula was 1 plus x. Okay, so right now, 1 now is equals to 8. So that actually cannot happen. Lah. So you need to factor out. Eight. So once you factor out 8, this whole thing is power 1 over 3. So if you were to factor out 8, don't forget to bring your 1 over 3 along with you. And don't forget that x also needs to be divided by 8. So right now, this is the one that needs to be expanded. Okay, so 8 to the power 1 over 3, you can calculate that easily. So let's leave that out. Okay, so expanding this, okay, it's still 1. Your n is n is equals to 1 over 3, okay? Uh, and that your x is now, x is equals to negative x over 8, okay? So, instead of just x, it is x minus 8 over, uh, minus x over 8, okay? Um, uh, this x is not supposed to be here. Okay, this x is not supposed to be here. <laughs> this is power 1. Okay, so next one would be power 2, and then the next here would be negative x. If that was, if we were to write another one, this would be power 3. Okay, and this is n, this is n minus 1, so over here would be n, n minus 1, n minus 2. Okay, over, this is 2 factorial, so this would be 3 factorial. So this would be the third term. If you were to expand it one more time, lah. Okay, but um, like I said, oh yeah, we need at least four terms. So this is lack of at least one more term, right? So you can calculate this, okay, and add one more here, okay? Right. So again, simplify it as most possible. Buka kurungan and everything, okay? So uh, moving on. Okay, last example for this part of the lecture. Now, again, your your 1 is now 2, so we're going to have to factorize that out. Okay, and your n is less than 1. 
Okay? So, factor out 2, don't forget your kuasa 1 right here. Okay? It needs to be there as well. Right? So, kuasa 1 goes out. Okay? Uh, and that your x is now 3 over 2. So, this is n. n, x, n, n minus 1, 2 factorial, x power 2. Sorry, that 2 became small. So, the next term here would be negative 1. Negative 1 minus 1, negative 1 minus 2 over 3 factorial. Um, and then your x term would be 3 over 2, x power 3, right? Right here, okay? If you, had, if you were to write down your fourth term, okay? So again, buka kurungan and simplify at most as most possible. Don't forget to write down what is your x valid for. Okay, so that's all for this week's lecture. Everything is online. Uh, so after this, there will be one more quiz for you to answer and then your attendance will be 100%. I will see you when I see you next week on the 30th of December. Miss Sue will be entering to teach you chapter 3, which is matrices. I hope you have fun. I'll see you when I'll see you. Assalamualaikum and have a very good day, guys.